All right, hey folks, welcome back. Um, so we all love machine learning and we love to kind of get going at a project and to kind of dig in and start figuring out how, how can we create that awesome ML solution. But the one thing we need to realize is that ML is not a magic tool that is going to solve all problems. So even for problems that ML can solve, sometimes an ML solution is not the best solution and we should not be moving forward with an ML solution. So before we even jump into an ML project, we need to ask ourselves: is ML the right solution? And this is what I wanna talk about today. All right, so what does ML do? Well, at its core, it's about learning complex patterns from existing data to make predictions on unseen data, okay? Now, let's break that down into each of the key components. All right, so the first one is learning. Okay, so what sets ML systems apart from other solutions is that they possess the remarkable ability to learn. Say you wanted to find geographic locations with the highest and the lowest Airbnb rental prices. Okay, this is not an ML problem because simply all you're trying to do is compute some summary stats. Now, let's say you wanted to predict the rental price for an Airbnb listing price based on relevant characteristics such as square footage, number of rooms, um, the neighborhoods, other amenities that may have, um, feedback from previous customers. As long as you have this historical data with the relevant characteristics that you want to use, ML can actually learn the relationship between those inputs and the outputs. And once learned, this ML system should be able to predict the price of new listings given its characteristics. Another example, say you wanted to segment customers based off of where they live geographically. This may be state, by county, or, or, or whatnot. Again, this is not an ML problem. Rather, it's just an aggregation problem where you are mapping the customers to the different geographic locations. However, if you want to segment customers by their purchasing history, this is something that needs to be learned from historical purchases and historical data. Once learned, this ML system can be used to predict the segment that a new customer likely falls into based off of their initial purchase. All right, the second characteristic is complex patterns. So ML proves valuable when dealing with very complex, intricate type of patterns. So not all problems involve patterns. For example, nobody would invest money into building an ML system to predict the next outcome of a fair die because there's no pattern to learn there. And again, if we look back to the Airbnb problem we just talked about, if you wanted to sort listings in the states that they're located in or maybe the zip codes, you again, you don't need an ML system to do this since the pattern is very simple. It's basically mapping each state or each zip code to the Airbnb listings. However, the relationship between a rental price and all the characteristics of a home is a far more complex pattern that needs to be learned. So this would be very challenging to manually specify from, from individuals. So ML is a great solution for this kind of a problem. So instead of telling your system how to calculate the price from a list of characteristics, we can allow the algorithm to identify these complex patterns and to use that information to predict the prices. Now realize that what is complex is quite different between humans and machines. So many tasks that are hard for humans are quite easy for machines. For example, raising a number to the power of 10. This is where traditional software excels at performing because there's no patterns to be learned. Here. This is simply just computational demand. On the other hand, many tasks that are easy for humans can be quite hard for machines. For example, decide if there's a cat in the picture. This is an obvious task to humans, but not obvious to machines. And again, this is where an algorithmic solution, such as machine learning, can really shine to extract the patterns that we need to identify a certain item in an image. Next is we have to have existing data. Because ML learns from data, there must be data from it to learn from. All ML solutions are built on historical data one way or another. Even zero-shot learning solutions are built on data. Now, albeit it's data that is learned from a different context and we use it in a new context and that's why they call it the zero-shot learning. However, the original model developed was built on data. So historical data always needs to be present in order to build an ML solution. And typically, 
the more data that we have, the better that the model will perform. All right, the next part is making predictions. So for the most part, ML models that are in production are usually for the purpose of making predictions. So they solve problems that require predictive answers. And as predictive models are becoming more effective, more and more problems are being reframed as predictive problems. What's more, ML can be especially appealing when you can benefit from a large quantity of what's called cheap approximate predictions. And we'll hit on this idea a little bit more in a couple of minutes. All right, and lastly, we're making predictions on unseen data. So the patterns that your model learns from existing data are only useful if unseen data also share these patterns, okay? So a model to predict what you're gonna buy on Amazon that's built off of what you purchased in 2015 likely is not gonna be all that great to make the predictions of what you're trying to buy today, okay? So in technical terms, it means that the unseen data that we're making predictions on must have a similar distribution as the data that your model was trained on. So you might ask, if data is unseen, how do we know what distribution it comes from? Well, you know what? We don't, but we can make assumptions. For example, we can assume that the behavior a customer has tomorrow is gonna to be the same that that customer had today. And we need to hope that our assumptions hold. Now, there are many ways within our ML system that we can build in ways to kind of monitor changes in the distribution of our unseen or new data compared to the training data. But for now, just realize that the objective is that our unseen data is going to align to the same distribution that the original data that our model is trained on came from. All right, so we just talked about the primary requirements that we have in order to have an ML solution be the right type of a solution for the given problem. However, there are certain characteristics that can really help to make our ML solution shine. The first one is that this is a highly repetitive task. So humans are great for what we call few shot learning, okay? You can show kids a few pictures of cats and they will recognize a cat the next time they see one. Despite awesome progress that we've made in this idea of few shot learning, most ML al algorithms still require many examples to learn pattern. So when a task is repetitive, each pattern is repeated multiple times, which makes it easier for machines to learn from it. Therefore, the more repetitive a task is, or the more repetitive something is that we are trying to predict, then likely the more data that we can have in order to build our model and to increase the performance of our model. Second, the cost of a wrong prediction is very cheap. So unless your model performance is 100% all the time, which is highly unlikely, not really gonna happen, your model is going to make mistakes. ML is especially suitable when the cost of a wrong prediction is very low. For example, one of the biggest use cases of ML today is in recommendation systems. This is because, well one, the tasks that we're trying to recommend for are usually highly repetitive. Shopping for stuff on Amazon, looking for a movie on Netflix, right? These are all tasks that are just highly repetitive and you know what, if we get the prediction wrong, it's not a backbreaker. There's not a ton of cost behind a wrong recommendation. Obviously we want the best recommendation possible but this is not a life or death matter. As the cost of a wrong prediction increases, then we need to question the appropriateness of ML more and more. If an ML prediction could cause catastrophic consequences, then the benefits of the right predictions must significantly outweigh the potential of that catastrophic misprediction. A great example is developing self-driving cars. Right, this is super challenging, and if there's a significant mistake in, in the maneuver of that car, this can easily lead to death. That is a catastrophic consequence. However, many companies are still pursuing this idea of a completely self-driving car because the potential to save many lives when self-driving cars are statistically safer than human drivers far outweighs potential of a single death from a wrong prediction. Bottom line, the cost of wrong predictions is a huge influence on whether an organization is even willing to use ML as a solution. So an important thing you need to do early on is to understand what is that cost 
of the consequence of a wrong prediction in your problem. All right, so three, scale. ML solutions often require significant upfront investment and in costs on data, compute, infrastructure, and talent. So it makes sense that we want to be able to use our solutions over and over, okay? So at scale means different things for different tasks, but in general, it means making a lot of predictions. So examples include recommending items for online shoppers. Many companies will have millions and millions of customers visiting their online stores on a daily or weekly basis. This means that we're gonna be making tens of millions of predictions every day. Now, there are instances where it appears like we're only making a single prediction, but it's actually a series of predictions. So a great example, a model that predicts who's gonna win the US presidential election. It seems like this is only gonna be used once every four years. But actually, this is making predictions constantly leading up to the election. There's often cases where election models are being updated hourly or even or even at the minute level as they get new information from voter information or voter results for a certain precinct, right? These models are recomputing the probability of an election. So we want problems that need many, many predictions, right? That means we're gonna scale our solution and reuse all the investment that we've made into it over and over and over. And that's where we can potentially get a return on investment. Also, having a problem at scale also means that there's a lot of data to collect because every time we're making a prediction, we can get that information to understand how well our model is performing. And we can also use that updated information to retrain our model down the road. So having a problem that scales not only allows us to reuse our inf infrastructure and investment that we've made, but also provides a lot more data down the road to continue refining and improving our model. All right, so the last characteristic that can really make machine learning solutions shine is constantly changing patterns. Cultures change, tastes change, technologies change. What's trendy today is not always gonna be trendy tomorrow. So if your problem involves one or more constantly changing patterns, hard-coded solutions such as handwritten rules can become outdated extremely quickly. Figuring how your problem changed so that you can update your handwritten rules can be very expensive and time-consuming and just not fast enough. But since ML solutions learn from data, you can update your ML model pretty quickly as long as you have new data and it's going to identify how certain trends or historical distributions have changed. All right, so that's it. That was a lot. Just realize that when your problems have these characteristics, ML is a prime candidate for a solution. If we're missing some of these characteristics, it warrants some serious thought behind whether or not a machine learning solution is the right way to go. And that's it for now. Keep an eye out for future ML system design videos. Until then, happy learning, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future tech videos.